Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful morning. We bless you for this last Sunday in the month of July. Thank you for your safekeeping, for your sustainer, for your direction, for your perfect protection, and for your elevation. Thank you because in this pandemic, we are hearing good news of protection, good news of prevailing grace. None in our church has been admitted. None has died of COVID-19. None has called me that they lost their job. Even those that did before the COVID-19, you are working at restoration. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for your supplies. Thank you, Lord, for the uninterrupted grace. Lord, we have everything because of your love, of your protection. Continue with us, O oh Lord. Amen. Father, today, draw us nearer to yourself. Amen. Help us to fulfill our calling. Amen. Let us know who we are in you. Amen. Let your glory be revealed. Amen. Let your grace be sufficient for us. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Please, uh, I would like us to sing that hymn again, the Lord of all openness. Because it touches on everything I'll be discussing with you today. That you truly have this wonderful God who is the God of all openness. in the world, have your seat. We are talking about the understanding the spirituality of calling. Understanding the spirituality of calling. 
college. And today, I want to go into the practicality aspect of this spirituality. Because there is the understanding and there is the application. Faith without works is a waste. Faith without works is zero. It is the faith that amplifies, it is the word that amplifies the faith and brings you closer to the Lord. Many of us, we have a calling that we have not even known. Many of us, we have a calling that we have not even addressed. And God is the God of all openness. He is the God of all eagerness. He is the God of all kindness. He is the God of all gentleness. The fact that God has not really dealt with you in a harsh manner is because of the gentleness. But don't think that you are escaping God because you have not matured to what he has called us to do. God is always ready to receive. We think we are the one waiting upon the Lord, but the Lord is the one waiting upon us. In five minutes, I want to just talk about what we discussed in the last two sessions. I mean five minutes. My people came to me, and they meant well. They said, Pastor, you spent about one hour preaching last time. I said, there are some sermons that are meant for the generals. There are some sermons that are meant for the ones that are called and chosen. Every time I finish here, I have to ask God, do I, do I really meet the test of expectation? You are already gone. I have to go before the one that put me here. Did I really meet the expectation of my calling? Or if I just make people to be good? Now, people run away after one and a half hours in the church, but they are sitting down watching Nollywood for two hours, and nothing bothers them. So who are we serving? Who are we pleasing? One sixty-eight hours in a week, and we are negotiating with God to give God two hours. I will not apologize for anyone. I will only do what God has sent me to do. Because if you call me home tonight, then I will know I have done his bidding. So, and that is also the same thing for you. You and I will answer the call. The one that knows Christ, when they die, they will find that Christ has always been with them and is waiting for them at the other end. The one that do not know the Christ, when they die, they also meet him and they will be judged for not following his will. Because no one can be on the face of the earth with all these gadgets, WhatsApp, Facebook, all this television, and you will say you have never heard about the name of Jesus Christ. And if your neighbor does not know Jesus Christ, it's not because of him not wanting to know, it's because you have not pressed for that, to let them know about the love of Christ. We all have a calling. We all have an invitation. Jesus Christ said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. He said, go and bear fruit. And let your fruit abide. John 15. So what fruit have I been bearing? I've been in Christendom for 3, 4, 5, 40 years. What are my fruits? What can people tell about me? If I were to go home today, who would say they came to know the Lord Jesus Christ because of you? God will help us. So we said that in the first two parts, the Lord will lead us by his spirit. He will not hold us accountable for what he has not revealed to us. But then, if you have not sought him or seek him, then it is not his fault. We are not waiting upon the Lord. He's the one that is waiting upon us. He's ready to take us. And it takes a certain level of faith to receive the calling of God. If you do not even have faith in the God that you are serving, you don't have faith in simple matters, how can you have faith that the Lord will back you up in, in your calling? If you have to receive a calling as a young, immature Christian, you will probably most likely be overwhelmed and be discouraged. God does not want to be overwhelmed. He does not want to be discouraged. And we said there's a purpose for our growth. God arranged things so that we will pray more. Challenges are meant to, for us to get to know God. Situations are meant to bring God's up and to lead us in the way of the Lord. We are not supposed to give up. He said you will not be weary in doing good. We are supposed to mature and be fully equipped in order to accomplish what God has given to us. A sister sent me, not here, from another state, sent me um, a request. She said, I have a prophetic gift. I've been seeing visions that come to pass, and, and yes, the husband has better story. But I knew he wants affirmation, but I did not stop at affirmation. I also tell, uh, tell her that there is more to read. There are dimensions to this. Just because you receive from God does not mean you should go and tell the person, ah, I saw you in the casket. No, no, don't put them to grave. It is for you to pray about that thing that you saw. Yeah, the person may, the spirit of them may be following the person, but don't go and tell the person that, oh, pray, oh, pray, oh. Uh, you are going to die. No, 
you are supposed to pray. Many things that we receive is for us to pray, not to go and announce to the person that say, oh, this is prophet of God. Come on, come, come, it takes your time. We need to be very cautious because things will come to us, even for our family. And if we don't know how to address things, we will just be overwhelmed and we'll throw everybody off. Uh, God will not give a revelation that does not mean to give us hope. Everything that we receive, we have the spirituality to cancel, to nullify, and we have the spirituality to also apprehend it. We have the right to convert. The ones we God can call those things that be not as if they are. So when it comes to the issue of big things, it is as much as you want. God has more than enough to give you. And the more you are willing, the more he's willing to give. That is why I love our general overseer. When he had the calling, he said, Lord, I know you can do it. I want the anointing of Jesus Christ when he was on the face of the earth. Because Jesus Christ was fully anointed on the face of the earth. He was walking with the power of the Holy Spirit. He's not contesting with Jesus Christ, but he said he wants the anointing to do exploit like Jesus Christ. Plus the anointing of Elijah. Plus the anointing of Elisha. Plus the anointing of Moses. Add it together, multiply by two, and give it to me. God said, people will not let you rest. <laughs> if I give you all this anointing, people will not let you rest. He said, I still want it. Now that the Jew said, he has to escape so that he can rest. When he's preaching, as you, as, as you are praying, he will give you prayer points. As you are praying, you already escaped through the back door. So that people will not be waiting for him. Everybody wants to touch his clothes. So God is more than willing to give you than you are willing to receive. The sermon I had here, um, I, I, I was ministered to that it's two sermons in one. So I'm just going to go through the practicality. We'll talk about the other ones next. We know that there are many things in the Bible that God tells us. Many secret that if you have time, you will rejoice in knowing God. I can tell you there's no more miserable Christian than the one who has walked away from his life-driven purpose. Life is about purpose-driven. Life must be based on what you are. When I ask you, oh, who are you? I'm an IT specialist. I am a medical doctor. That is not who you are. That is what, what you need to sustain you on this planet. Earth. Who you are is what you will be known when you leave this earth and go to heaven. Who are you? Oh, I'm a prophet by calling. I'm a teacher by calling. I'm, the, everybody has a definite calling. So your identity is what God gives you as your calling. He told Jeremiah before you are forming your mother's womb, I knew you and I call you as prophet of the nation. Jeremiah tried to negotiate. He said, oh, Lord, I'm a young man. I'm, in, I'm still an illegal version of God. said, don't say you are young. But when you say you are young, you will negotiate yourself out of what I want to give to you. He said, what do you see? He said, I see an almond tree. God said, you have seen well. So when God is asking questions about you, it's not that he has not seen where, what he wants you to see. He wants to see whether you are seen in his own way. So what is your calling? Is your calling agreeing with the Lord? What do you call yourself? What do you see yourself at? God already knows where he's taking you. And I want to tell you, the part that God will give you may not be important to you in your estimate, but let me say this, that part is important as far as God is concerned. In our body, there is this little portion of our abdomen, uh, of our stomach called appendix. Doctors say they don't know what function it does. But if a food drop in that appendix and ruptured, it can kill. The smallest part, the doctor do not agree. I've never seen a doctor that said the specialized special appendicitis is no. It's useless as far as your metabolism is concerned. But if a mistake, your, a drop of rice or mashed potato got dropped in and it stink, it ruptured, it killed instantly. So no small part is in the kingdom. The one that you think is not important may be the most important. Sometimes when I do something that I know is wrong, maybe even argue with my wife, I punish myself. I say, Lord, I will be watching this. It's between you and him. I know I have wronged him. I know I have done something. I will say, Lord, I will be watching the bathroom for the next one week. You have to learn to bring yourself low so that Christ can be exalted. So the one, if I punish myself for seven days or seven weeks, doing things that you don't even know I'm doing, cleaning, 
how will I not be cautioned not to do the same thing next time? So you have to know how to have a reign on your life. Now, Ephesians 2, 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Bible says you are hidden in Christ and Christ is hidden in the Lord. I want to also know that God that we are serving is spirit, is light, is consuming fire. His names are wonderful. He's still I am that I am. Ever faithful, ever sure. So, for the work of the Lord to be done, we concluded last two times, some will be Joshua, some will be Caleb. Some will be Moses, some will be Aaron, some will be Miriam. They all have their portion. Some will be Philip, and some will be Stephen. Which one are you? We are prophets. We are singers. We are deacons. And we are apostles. So, that is what we have concluded in the last two teachings. Now, I want to address this important thing. Why do you exist? Psalm 139 tells us all about ourselves. Why do you and I exist? What is the purpose of your life? Why are you here? It is what you need to know and to affirm. My Moreau was born poor. He was the sixth child of 11 children, just right in the middle. Five before him, five after him. He said, where they live was made of wood and some, uh, some plywood and so on. Only two rooms. And their living room and kitchen. You have to know the different, only where the stove is. And all the boys sleep, sleep on the floor. He said, rat are constant visitors. So he was born poor. But he said they never know they were poor because everybody around them looked like them. <laughs> until you leave your village, until you leave your area, you never know that there is a better life. That is why many of us come to America and we don't want to go back. Because we have seen a better life than the village that we come from. It's unlike me that came from the fashion city of Elisha, fashion city of West Africa. So I can go back to my <laughs> to Elisha, but praise the Lord. But many of us, we come to America, we don't want to go back. May God have mercy on us. Africa needs you. <laughs> That's another sum of another day. <laughs> praise the Lord. So my small at the age of 13. Ask the Lord, why are we poor? You know what God told him? It is because of your mind. Why are you poor? God said, because of your mind. Oh, at the age of 13. So he started reading the Bible. He read the old Bible. Because he said, the founder that as a man thinketh, so he is. So your mind is your limitation for why you are poor. Um. For the first time, at the age of 13, he did not understand what he was reading. Second time, by at the age of 14, he read it. He had some understanding. And he determined not to be poor. As of the time he was preaching, he asked a jet. Flying. Your limitation, my limitation, is the mind. When, 20 years ago, whenever I was asked to do some announcement, I was a deacon with regime under Pastor Fadel, who is now the chairman. But I only preach one time in five years. But I always get assignment to come and do the offering because they know I'm an accountant. I know how to make people feel guilty. And I always say that you will never manage. I will not manage. One pastor came to me and said, everybody manage. I said, no. The God that I serve is not the manager. I have seen other communion for the blood. God is not the manager. I will never manage because I have learned the secret of not managing. As I have any money that I have, the first thing I ask God, Lord, how should I spend this money? The shot that we have, we, we gave one million dollars to them. I gave two thoughts. The shot gave one thought. I will have loved the shot to do up and up. That church, eight years, they were kicking them out of the house. I said, we need to help this church. The pastor used 80% of his money to buy a $10 million plot. 
And I got really involved in this man. That shot, they already been to level four, fourth level. That the landlord already locked two of the uh, three of the four doors. Only one door to come in, and they have about two hundred members. The work of the door is about to. So when my brother sold them the land, which is worth about twelve thousand dollars, twelve million dollars for ten million. My twelve million naira. Thank you. Twelve million naira. He sold it for ten million naira. He now introduced me to them. He said, "That's one of your pastor in America." So I was compelled. If somebody who's at this star can do that. I, let me do. So I said, I promise one million dollar for you. I will do half. My child will do half. One million naira. Maybe God wants to be doing giving one million dollar. <laughs> but believe me, because of our situation, I gave two thought. The shop gave one thought. They now called me about a month ago that they are doing very well. They are doing gloriously well. Believe me, a money I never expected came in. PPP for real estate because we never sold houses. We didn't buy houses for us during the, the lockdown. I have 5000 I said, Lord, what should I do with this? The first thing that God reminded me was that shot. I sent 500000 naira to them. I know how to get favor from God. If you learn to get favor from God, you never manage. Before you spend the last one, new one will come in. Because God knows the one he's serving. I'm telling you not as a master of boasting because that money was not even mine. It came to me. They call it PPP loan. It is a loan, but it's forgivable if I don't fire myself from job. And I'm not going to fire myself from real estate. So it's a gift. I gave. So what I'm saying is that the, they are happy over there. They are doing the work of the Lord. I'm rejoicing that I am a contributor to what the Lord is doing. And as I'm doing that, my, my old school, we are trying to rebuild the hall. I sent to them. There are often, there are places you can sow that you never go broke. The more you sow, the better you are. So this is the vision that I'm trying to give you. God knows everything about you. My small role decided to change. Now, God is always with you, Psalm 139 said. He reigns over the heart and the heavens and even hell. Everywhere, God fills. God cannot have a vacuum that he does not fill. Every creation he fills. God has a wonderful purpose for you. God has you and me concerning his heart. So once I want that tonight, read it. You will know that God has always been with you. He knows where you are. You cannot escape from him. He does not need to run after you to catch you. So your calling is a calling that is waiting for you. And you have to manifest God loves each and every one of us. And why do you exist? And for what purpose? It's because God wants you to love him and have fellowship with him. It's an honor that you must not turn down. When you turn down that honor, you have ignored God. And the Holy Spirit will have to deal with that. So understand it. Nobody can outrun God. Now, the practicality of our worship. Moses, we know the burning bush experience. Moses was born in Egypt, watched over by his sister when they can no longer hide him because all male children were being killed by the Pharaoh. But the mother had him in the house at a time when the baby could not be kept. Miriam was watching uh, Moses in a casket. I mean, what do you call the baby something? Crib, not casket, thank you. <laughs> In the crib. And one day, Pharaoh's daughter saw Moses. Said, This must be an Hebrew child. Did not give it to the father to kill. So I'm going to adopt him. The name Moses was called Drawn Out from Water. And do you know that name stick to Moses? Every battle Moses was fighting was water. He fought River Nile, turned it to red. He fought Red, red, red Sea, parted it. He, they left Red Sea, they got to River Mara, the bitter water. He had to get a solution for it. Even River Mara, God said, I said, tree by you there. Yank the branch, put it in that water. Every solution that you need, God is always have it ready. Even that for this coronavirus, God has a solution only that we do not know. 
hand, he got to a place there's no water. God said, eat the rod. Eat the rock with the rod one time. The second time, God says, speak to the rod. But that rock, that rock was Jesus Christ. The first time, eat the rock, the rod. Second time, speak to the rock. Water gush out. It was that same water when he told the people, he said, do we now give you water, you stiff naked people? Call them the people of God. God said, you have honored me before. It was that context that came in. Because he never knew how to change his name. God did not know how to change the name. God changed the name for Jacob. He said, Jacob, you have been Jacobin everybody. Everybody on your road, you have been Jacobin. I will change you to Israel. He changed Abraham to Abraham. Sarah to Sarah. God has a reason for changing him. He never changed the name of Moses. But Moses finished well. Because God kissed his son good night on Mount Pisgah. But this started with the burning bush experience. Many of us may not get the burning bush experience. But you still have an experience that will let you know your calling. How about Samuel? We know how Samuel became a prophet. God was patient. God stood three or four times. Then Samuel, Samuel, he ran to Eli. Eli perceived that it was God. He said, speak to Lord for your servant to hear it. God spoke. From that day, Samuel never stopped running from God. And the Bible said none of the word of Samuel fell to the ground. You may not be called like Samuel was called, but you still have a calling. You have to search it out. Then we have Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1 told us about his calling. He was a young boy playing basketball, soccer, just a freelancer like any young boy. But okay. And God told him, Jeremiah chapter 119, they will surely fight against you, but I'm with you to prevail. Anytime God's in a calling, he gives you a backing. He gives you a future. He gives you a sustenance. Now we have Daniel. Let us go to Daniel chapter 1, because Daniel who did not have a call. He trained himself to be one that God will use. Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. We will read it. So verse 18. Because there's a price to pay for every calling. Look at Daniel, verse 8. But Daniel resolved that he will not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. Therefore, he has a sheep of eunuchs to allow him not to defile himself. And God gave Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the sheep of eunuchs. And the sheep of eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king who has sent your food and your drink. For why should he see that you are worse in condition than the youths? Who are of your age, so you will endanger my head with the king. In those days, when you do something wrong, the king will just ask them to repent. There is no appeal court. There is no supreme court. The king is the Almighty, Almighty. So you know this man was taking the beginnings. Then Daniel said to the steward, "Go the chief of owners at that sign over them." Over Daniel, Ananiah, Michelle, and Azariah. Test your servant for 10 days. Let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance and the appearance of the youth who eat the king's food be observed. Every food that is served will first, will first be presented to the idol. When they are slaughtering, there is incantation on that slaughtering. When they are going to serve, they present it to the to the idol for blessing. So that's the food that you are being served. And then say, I will not take this cup. Do you know that when you buy some goat meat, some type of meat, uh, they, they will say that it's a Muslim way. That, uh, Allah meat. In other words, they, they pray on it. If you buy anything from African store, please pray and cover it with the blood of Jesus Christ. Even the ingredient that you buy, you never know who pluck it and what they say about it. Understand this. The people of this world, they are wiser in their own ways. 
and the children of God. So the alarm means before you cook it, bless it. Everything you buy from Landazo, bless it. You don't know where it's coming. You don't know what I've been pronouncing to it. Sometimes cancers just showed up, not because of your mistake or because of your situation, not because of chemical imbalance, it's just because somebody has pronounced. So the blood of Jesus Christ is your best antioxidant. And God Almighty will answer prayers. Anytime you eat McDonald's, pray on it. You never know. The only reason why some people get a job in a restaurant was to be cursed. Satan has their people positioned. So, they were given vegetables to eat, and at the end of 10 days, verse 15, it was seen that they were better in appearance and fatter in flesh than all the youths who ate the king's food and delicacies. They disciplined themselves. They were ignoring the meat, the mashed potato, the sweet potato. They were just eating vegetables, lettuce, water. God made them to be better. Verse 17, as for these four youths, God gave them learning and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and things. They applied themselves. They deceived themselves. I want to ask you, when last did you fast? When last did you pray? Have you ever asked God to reveal your purpose to you? What price are you willing to pay? How far do you want to go with God? Do you think you have arrived or you have done enough? Because Daniel has just begun his journey. You will see at the other chapters that Daniel actually was 10 times brighter, smarter than all the kings, astrologists, soothsayers, magicians. 10 times better. And when they come to governance, because of what God has given to him. 200 satraps looked for one fault. 200. They could not find one iota of mistake. But Daniel, if two people were to look for a fault to accuse you of, what would they not do? Do you know the first thing that government normally does? When they arrest somebody and they want to compel them to say something, they will go and check their caste record. You know, many people like to shit on that record. That's what they did to the lawyer of Donald Trump. They say, oh, you have some taxi cab. You never report all the income, all this time. By the time they finished with him, the man was sweating. He was ready to talk. The fact of the matter is, Daniel, 200 people, 200 governors, will not find one iota. When God gives you a calling, he also gives you profession. And Daniel had grace for bishop. But he had it in the place of prayer. He never misses prayer. So the particular is that you have to get your knowledge from God. Now, Elijah, nobody knows how he became a prophet. He was introduced to us as a full-fledged prophet. We are not given his early life story. But like very many of the Israelites, he was a Torah disciple. He was a disciple of Torah. In other words, he went to the school of the sons of the prophet. We never knew. But we knew we had revealed about Elisha. And I want to tell you about Elisha. Because certain things was revealed to me. My first work was with the Federal Ministry of Work, Lagos, in Nigeria. Federal Ministry of Works and Housing. And I got my salary. My mom took the salary from me and distributed it to the tenants, the relations, everybody. And each person, was, I was the one that did the work. And they took the money from me. They did not give me the money for the bus. And they distributed it. And each one was praying for me. I said, what kind of prayer is this? Are you with me? I never knew that she was procuring favor for me. That because I have blessed some people with my labor, no cause shall be able to override the blessings of the majority around me. Now, look at what happened with Elisha. Elisha, <laughs> in second first king 19, 20 to 21, first king 19 to 21, when Elijah just dropped 
is a uh, what's it called? His mantle, thank you, his mantle on Elisha. Elisha left the oxen standing there. He was walking. He has a company, Elisha Agricultural Company. When the mantle got on him, he left it there. What did he do? He pursued. He said, He left the oxen standing there, ran after Elijah and said to him, First, let me go and kiss my father and my mother goodbye. And then I will go with you. Elijah replied, go on back. But think about what I have done to you. That man too was a special blessing. You know that when Moses was going, he lay hand upon Joshua. God said, transfer your wisdom and your anointing to Joshua. This same thing is the same. The man too alone, which was already on Elijah, is supposed to be a form of Confirmation and attestation for Elisha. Now, so Elisha left him and went back. What did he say he was going to do? Just to kiss his mother and his father goodbye. But what did he do? He took his yoke of oxen, slaughtered them. He burned them with the plowing equipment to cook the meat and give it to the people. Remember what I told you about mother? When he took my salary, gave it to everybody. The same thing he did. He fed them with the meat to the people and they hate. Then he set out to follow Elijah. What he has done was to make sure that no cause can ever prevail against his missionary exploit. Because when it came to the time that Elijah was going to be taken away from Elisha, the sons of prophet came to him in every city. Do you know? That your master will be taken away from you today. Say, I know. Hold your peace. They were trying to send discouragement against him to let him fumble. He would have said, Enough. Because Elijah also keep on saying, Stay here. I'm going to the next city. But he said, No, I'm going to follow you. Elijah would. So he has already fed them with prayer so that their voice cannot prevail. Him. In any calling, in any situation, you have a counter issue. You have something that want to counteract your goals, your calling. It is your prayer that must be prevailing. Jesus Christ is our all in all. He has sacrificed for us but we also have to pay our pray, pray, prayer price in the place of prayer. Every time they try to discourage Eli Elisha because what, why are they telling him that your master is going today? It's not for him to, to be happy. He's to say now we will see the stuff you are made of. We have been seeing you. You are the um, you are the <laughs> follow follow of this man. You are the official of this man. You are the one that is sent. You are like the prime minister. Now he's going. We will see what you are made of. But he said, I know. I know. Hold your peace. Because you already fed them. Sir, ma'am, if you have learned to eat everything that comes to you and you have not learned to share, you are only bidding for them for yourself. If you have not learned to share, you are only bidding for them for yourself. The battle you are afraid to fight in your lifetime, your children will continue to fight it. I am convinced about David's life. David fought many battles. Solomon enjoyed throughout. He has peace. You must fulfill your calling so that your children will be hanging on your wings and they will prevail. And not only must you fulfill your calling, you must even receive for your children that you can also guide them. I know that all my children have been called into ministries. When I told them, they said, no, we don't want to be pastor. We don't. No, you don't have to be pastor. Don't be a godly state man. Be Christ ambassadors. There are things that I cannot say with my own accent that your accent will make sense to the one you are speaking to. Either in encouragement. As you receive, you receive for the one to follow you. And God Almighty will guide them. And I always tell my children, don't joke with your tithe. Don't joke with your tithe. And they are listening. Sir, ma'am, your calling is very important. Benjamin Franklin once said, laziness travels so slowly that poverty can overtake him. Laziness travels so slowly that poverty can overtake him. When it comes to spirituality, laziness is overtaking 
and apathy follows. Apathy is worse. Apathy is next to frustration. Apathy is next to strangulation. If you have not known how to master your calling and you are playing games, you are playing games with your life. And apathy. Just remember the word apathetic. There is no break. The devil does not give a break. It will only multiply agony. What should be under your feet will now be riding over you. Solomon said, I have seen strange things in the land. I have seen the servant on the horses and the princes pulling the horses. Because the prince does not know where I belong. You are the princes. You are the kings. You are the one in charge. When you do not know your place, you will now be going to the Kalokalo prophet. Asking them for the prophet that God should have given to you. If the Kalokalo prophet are getting something, you that have the Holy Spirit should be to get it. He said, in the last days, my people, my people, not strangers, my people, they will be led by the Spirit. The young ones shall see visions. The old ones shall see dreams. If you are his people, you have a right. Even if anybody gave you any revelation, Lord, that man was your creator. I am your creator. You say you are not respect of any person. Whatever you have shown him, confirm it to me. If the man says you are going to be blessed, go into this business, do this, do that, and you lose in that business, you cannot sue that man to court. It is you that have not gone to God to get what you need to get. You can verify, be discerning. Not all prophecies are meant to be for now. Some of them are meant to be for later. God is not the God of denial. He's a God that is faithful. Denial will never turn to de delay. Do not turn to denial. Denial will, denial will never be for a child of God. Delay will come to manifestation. People of God, don't let laziness overtake you. Let God lead you. Second Kings 2. 5. Said, and the sons of the prophet that were at Bethel came forth to Elijah. Sons, not one. They already have a meeting. They came. And they said to Elisha, Know you that the Lord will take away your master from your head today. And he said, Yes, I know. Hold your peace. But when Elisha obtained, he knew what he wanted. He followed the master to the head. Until shadows of fire out of nowhere separated them, Elijah went by the wild wind. The shadows of fire did not take Elijah off. It only separated the living from the dead. But Elijah went up by the wild wind. Because it was already a spirit. Only two people were not buried. Enoch, he walked with God and he was no more. And Elijah walked with God and was no more. Moses was buried. The angel did the burial. Nobody knows the burial ground of Moses. The book of Jude let us know that when God sent the angels, archangels, Michael, and others, to go and bury this great man. You know, God called Moses up. At the age of 120, Moses, Moses climbed the mountain. He was a mountain climber at the age of 120. His strength was not abated. His eyes did not dim because God used him to the end. And God will have continued to use him, but because of one little anger, what you call only anger, be careful, because that only anger may not be only to God. Should we now give you water? You steep naked people. So it's now God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and Moses. Do we? We are just be a servant. Freely we have received. Freely we shall give. Don't ever consider yourself to be the authority. Even if somebody wrong you, when it comes to the issue of ministerial, Observe your ministerial presence. Don't put your political sentiment into it. Even when a brother wrongs you, make sure you fulfill your spiritual essence. Don't let any personal issue contaminate it. Because if you let personal issue contaminate your spiritual focus and spiritual leading and spiritual discharge to discourage a brother or a sister, you will answer to God. Many are wounded in the church. Many come here rejoicingly, and people of God wounded, wounded by God's people. 
And that's why some of them do not want to come back to church. You have been wounded at work. You have been wounded outside. They came to church where they think they will find refuge. And there is somebody played by the devil to wound them. Please, people of God, let us be very careful. Your calling is to be an encourager. Your calling is to be a teacher. Your calling is to manifest godly glory and not to cause havoc here and there. Apostles are sent to establish order. Prophets speak for God to build up holy people. Prophets are to speak to let you know the now of God. It is to build up, not to tear down, not to make you to be afraid. A prophet that is giving you bad news, watch out for it. Prophets are sent to speak for God, to build up the body, to elevate the body, to body, to warn them of the consequence. Evangelists declare the good news to the lost. You have a position. You have a right to a calling. Pastor, shepherd, lead, protect, and feed the sheep. Pastor, shepherd, lead, and protect the sheep. But sometimes pastors has, can sound like a dog to scare away the wicked intruders. So if you see this, part, shepherd, uh, this shepherd who does not look like he should be one day and was howling and barking at somebody to get them off from here. You know the reason. Because if you don't deal with the wicked, they will take away some of your people. I'm writing a book to warn the Christian door about the infiltration. Infiltration into the Christian door. People that want to come into our midst, dance like we dance, even shout a little more than you do, run away with our beautiful girls. We need to go back to the same way they were. The devil in our midst. But I have a word for you. God has never created anyone greater than me. And he catches the crafty in their craftiness. So we need to warn our people. We need to warn. Because I see many things going on. I see people coming into the Christian dome. And after two or three children, they will tell the wife, you want to remain in the marriage? Come to the mosque with me. Oh, you marry me in the church. Uh, we serve the same God. Do I tell you I'm serving an idol? A lot of things are happening. So our eyes must be open. Love is blind, but marriage is real reality. And people must be one. People of God, teachers instruct in truth, revealing instruction, guidance, enlightenment, doctrine, direction, and knowledge. I'm a teacher. I'm a preacher. Sometimes, it can be a short sermon. Sometimes it can be long. Everything is meant for individuals to take your portion in it. God will help us. As I round up, I want you to know. Surely the sovereign Lord, that is Amos 37. Amos 37. Surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servant and to his people. People of God, you have had about the practicality of the calling. Let us rise up and ask. Father, I have not chosen you. You chose me that I should bear fruit and that my fruit must abide. Let me know my purpose in the Christendom. Let me march in my column. Let me know my purpose in the Christendom. Let me march my, in my column. Let me not fail. Let me not faint. I don't want to miss my way. We are all that I have in heaven and earth. Lead me all the way, Lord. Lead me all the way. Let me know the essence of my being. Please, Lord. Endow me with your supernatural grace. Endow me with your supernatural grace. To finish the purpose for my assistance. Let me not faint. Let me not fail. Let me not fall by the wayside. Let me follow all the way through. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In the book of John 9, chapter 4, 5 and 17, the Lord Jesus Christ said, I must walk. In another place, he said, The Father walketh, either to and I walk. What work are you doing? Jesus, our leader, walk. What work are you doing? In this book, I bought it 20 years ago, exploring the secret of success by Oedeko. He said, Walk on Tetikis faith. James 2 18 said, Faith without work is zero, basically. <laughs> what is faith? It is taking God's word and acting upon it. You want to pray, Lord, I don't want any more vacuum in my life. Every vacuum, fill it, oh Lord. Fill every area of my life. Let me begin to go out and pour my life into something worthy of your calling. Only the working hands are blessed. Only the working hands are blessed. I do hands only at devil's battery. Only the working hands are blessed. Let my hands be working for you. Help me to rise up against failure, against obscurity. Help me to rise up against apathy. Help me to rise up against frustration. Let me fulfill my covenant obligation for success. Back me up, Lord. My middle name will not be frustration or failure. My middle name will be achievement. Will be favor. Will be arising and shining. Help me, Lord. Do it, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. He said we should call those things that be not as if they are. Because the Holy Spirit in you is activating force. I told you 20 years ago, I've been saying I will not manage. Even when things look like management, God reverts it to become abundance. You want to pray, Lord. I bet I meet a verse in my life. I will not manage, I will be enriched. I'll be spiritual, I'll be blessed. Even if you don't believe it, pray it with the little faith you have. Faith like a monster seed, you will move the mountain. Rise up and pray. Rise up and declare, I will not manage. I shall be blessed. I bet I'll meet adverts in my life, in my home, in my situation. Before I spend the last two salaries, more will be added in the name of Jesus Christ. I will be a lender. I will not be a borrower. He said, you shall be created, you shall be established. Those two are written for this like this. Peace shall be my lot. Blessing shall follow me and overtake me. I will be blessed and I will be blessed unto others. All shall be well in my home. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We want to pray for America, we want to pray for the Africa, for Asia. Things are not getting very nicely between U.S. and China. U.S. closed the Chinese embassy in Texas. China responded with closing the embassy of U.S. too. And a lot of things are going on. We have internal turmoil. We have problems between Democrat and Republican. Yesterday, we have the black militias marching, about 500 of them, in military fatigue, marching in Kentucky. And the white supremacists also rose up in their home military fatigue, marching. The police had to erect a barrier between them. It does not go for peace. We want to pray, Lord, we want your own rulership in this land, in Africa, in America. We want your rulership in our land. We want your rulership all over the world. We have tried the power of men. Men has fed off. But you, Lord, rule over us. Rule over this country. Rule over did our time and season rule over Africa, rule over Asia, rule over Europe. You are the God of all. We need your peace. We need your peace. We don't want civil war. 
We don't want things to go bad. We want divine restoration, divine normalcy. Please, Lord, rule over our land. Save us with your saving grace. Direct us and deliver us, Lord. Help us. Reverse the irreversible. Reverse the irreversible. Let the pandemic come to an end. Let the pandemic come to an end. Save your people. Deliver your own. Comfort those that love their loved ones. Be with our doctors, nurses, CNAs, radiologists, everyone working in the healthcare sector. Be with them, be by them, be in them. Protect them and uphold them. Let your faithfulness see us through. Have your will, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Finally, I want to spend one minute or two concerning your own issues. We all read about the woman with the issue of blood, but everyone on the face of the earth, including me, have an issue. Bring your issue to the Lord and trust Him to meet you at your point of expectation. And what I said, though we walk in the midst of trial, the Lord will revive us. Though we walk in the midst of trial, the Lord will revive us. His hand shall be stretched against the wrath of our enemies. And his very right hand shall uphold us. The Lord will perfect that concerning us. Psalm 71 said, Please, Lord, increase our greatness and comfort us on every side. The book of Isaiah said, None shall lack their mate. None shall lack their mate, for the only shall gather unto them their partners. Father Lord, we want wedding bells to ring. Wedding bells. We can handle monthly wedding bells, weekly wedding bells. Let wedding bell rings in our sanctuary. Let the children of life beget each other in the name of Jesus. Send help to us from your sanctuary. Grant us our heart desires. Fulfill our petitions. Elevate, O oh Lord. Glorify yourself and sanctify. Let no one go back the same way they came. Let no one return the same way before they started. Let there be a rising and shining. Fulfillment, perfection of divine order. Elevation in the spiritual. Elevation in the natural. Quickening of the body, soul, and spirit. All by your grace, Lord. He said, my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves. I, the Lord, will have mercy on them and ill of their diseases. Ill us of all our diseases. Ill of ignorance. Ill of laziness. Ill of cancer. Ill of issues. Ill, 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 O oh Lord. The dry way may be beautiful, but the old way may not be that glorious. Father, Lord, let marriage be restored. Let my tap bliss be restored. Let the scape fall off from the eyes of the husband and wife. Let the veil be torn. Let husband love his wife. Let the wife love and respect their husband. Let there be harmony. Harmony. Harmony in Christendom. Harmony in our family. Harmony in our life. Support, O oh Lord. Sustain, O oh Lord. Direct, O oh Lord. Elevate, O oh Lord. Fulfill, O oh Lord. Perfect, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Let Christ not be the of glory. We shall not fail. We shall not fail. We shall not fall. We shall not be put to shame. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father Lord, we thank you. Eternal God is our refuge. Underneath are the everlasting arms. And shall trust the enemy from before us until he destroy them. Father Lord, be our refuge and strength. We are present in trouble. Every encounter with the enemy, let it result into our victory. Amen. Make us truly overcome us. He said we are more than a conqueror. Make us truly conqueror. Amen. Your word said in Malachi 4, Unto you that fear the name of the Lord, shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wing. And we shall go forth like a soft fair calf. And the serpent and scorpion shall be ashes under our feet. We we'll receive that mandate. We go in your power. Psalm 49 said, we should execute the written judgment upon the hidden. 
This honor have all the saints. That honor to execute the written judgment, give it to us. Back in with our calling. Let us go far with you. Glory, honor be unto you. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, I would like to invite you. Jesus Christ is a good Savior. He's the Lord of hope, Lord of all, Lord of all openness. It's good to know him. Please, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, just repeat after me. Father Lord, thank you for I have had the message. I now believe that Jesus Christ is your son, your only begotten son. I came to this world to die for my sin. Lord, forgive me my sins. I repent of all my sins, of all my ignorance, of all my shortcomings. He said, come as you are. Here I am, Lord. Please accept me. Make me one of your own. And Lord, increase me in knowledge and understanding. Let me finish well with you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. If you have prayed this prayer, we believe that the Lord Jesus Christ has said, none that call upon my name shall be me. Has accepted you. Please call upon us. Call 313-377-7525 or reach us at our rccgmotl.org and I will be able to work with you. God bless you. And we say the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Three times, for with us is the Lord, our God, to help us and the Father about it. For with us is the Lord, our God, to help us and the Father about it. Finally, for with us is the Lord, our God, to help us and the Father about it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.